Hello, and welcome back again to Learning Fabric. Uh, Tommy and I are going to jump right into today. We're going to do an intro around Data Wrangler. So let's jump over to our desktop, and we'll start demoing right away. Bringing up my desktop here, I want to show you that we are now in PowerBI.com. We are in our workspace that has a number of artifacts. Now, we've been doing this series for a little while now, and only with... I don't know, a handful of days or that we've been working on things here. We have a ton of items in your workspace. This is very helpful and a good tip to know. On the right-hand side of your screen, there will be a filter option. So what we're going to do is we're going to filter down because in order for us to use Data Wrangler, we need to be in a notebook experience. So we're going to filter. We're going to go in here and we're going to filter down to the notebooks item on the list. And what this will do is it will filter out all the options on the page and it'll give me just a shortened list uh, and you can see very clearly what are the notebooks. So I find this to be very helpful. We don't have the ability to make folders or other things yet inside workspaces. So this is a great place to get started. Today, we'll be jumping into our notebook called Intro to Data Wrangler. So we're going to talk about Data Wrangler and do a little bit of an overview of that app and how to use it inside your notebooks. First thing I'll do is I'll open the notebook by clicking on the name. This will now open up our notebook. On the left-hand side, we have our lake house or we had our lake house. I don't know where that went. Let's add that back in there. We'll go ahead and add our great lake data house, lake house, right back in there. Just to make sure we had it. On the left-hand side, these are all the tables and things that we have attached to this notebook. So these are the, the tables and the files that we care about to be able to load and do things inside our notebook. This is actually an example that we did prior where we were able to load a data frame, but we have to load a very specific kind of data frame, a pandas data frame, in order to use Data Wrangler. So what I'm going to do here is go to command number one, and I'm going to click the little blue arrow for or the little play button to run this cell. And what this will do, it will run or execute this command. It's going to actually go into our great lake. You can see we have a spark.readTable command. And then the name of the table is the name of the lake, where it came from, the lake house name. And then it's giving you the name of the table. Batting 01 is the table that we're reading from. And you'll notice by comparison, there is the name of the lake, and then there's our batting 01 table that is listed over here on the left-hand side. So that's how we know what we're loading in. We can see that our job has succeeded by looking at the bottom of this ribbon here. And with this now, I can go up to the data tab. This is the data ribbon at the top of the page. And you'll now notice there's, if I click on that ribbon, there's an option here for launching Data Wrangler. We're going to launch Data Wrangler. It's going to load all the data frames and You'll notice here we have this pandas data frame, and then this references the pandas data frame that we made down here. So every time you make a pandas data frame, each one of those data frames will appear in that dropdown list. So you can then go into Data Wrangler and operate or provide additional calculations on top of that data frame. And you'll see how this all comes full circle after we build some operations and then come back to our notebook and implement those operations. I'll click on pandas df here in the upper left hand corner and now you'll see a new UI appear. This is the data wrangler experience and this is more for um, think of this as power query for Python or power power query for pandas uh, is really the idea here. So this will feel very similar. I'm going to quickly go over some of the UI. You have some uh, options at the top up here. These will light up as we add new features. You'll see these options appear. We'll be able to add any code or code changes we make here back to our notebook by using this button. And then we can copy code to a clipboard if you want to, or we can save the output of data as a CSV file if we need to do something with that uh, in another testing or whatever you want to look at. On the left-hand side, you'll notice we have this operations window. So this is the first section here. And the operations window are standard operations that the data wrangler knows how to write code for. So you might have to play with some of the operations, as Tommy and I will demonstrate and show you. Uh, you do have the ability of writing code and using the operations pane at the same time. Down below that, you'll notice there's another one for cleaning steps. So as you build a single step at a time, think about filtering a table, selecting columns, um, aggregating information. All those details are supplied directly through those cleaning steps. So the cleaning steps element is uh, it's same thing you would do or how you would use this inside Power Query. It's one procedural step at a time. And every time you add a new step, the data frame or the data that's represented in the window here will automatically change. For every operation, you'll notice there is a 
window down below, which this is super cool. Every operation shows you the code and every operation could be multiple lines of code as well, but it's going to show you that code listed here down in that bottom window. So every operation you click on, the code will automatically update. Next, there is also details about all of our columns. You'll notice here the data type of the column is listed on the left-hand side. The name is in the middle. And then you get some generic statistics about that column. In the year ID, because this is a numerical column denoted by the number, it gives me the minimum value, the maximum value. It shows me how many data points are missing and how many are unique. And it also gives me an ID or the name of the column all in one kind of graphical interface. You can get this same experience inside Power Query, but this is just the version of this and how it works for um, the Data Wrangler. Another option here, well, a review. There is an, an ellipsis, which I don't love this. It only appears when you, cup, when you hover, but just be aware it is there. There are more options on that column. So you can click on the ellipsis on the column, and then there are quick operations. Rename, drop the column, change the data type of the column. These are quick operations you can then easily Right, uh, click on that ellipsis and immediately apply those changes to this, which will add code and steps to the left-hand side of the window. Finally, you can click on the column itself, and as you click on the column, it will highlight them. You can use Control key and click on multiples. So now I've highlighted three different columns by using Control and my cursor. If I click on a single column, you'll notice there's a summary tab on the right-hand side of the page. This tells me more details about what's inside that column. Now this is. I mean, from a, from a data person, I just love this. It gives me a whole bunch of other rich information to quickly figure out if there's problems in the column. This is just awesome. Shows me how many rows we have, what is the mean, the standard, the average, the deviations. All of your statistical stuff is living here. Tommy loves it because he loves statistics. And, and that's kind of just basically the overview of that page. And I'll just do one quick operation, and then we'll let Tommy demo out, demo out all the other operations we're going to do here today. So let's just say, for example, I wanted to apply a filter or I wanted to sort something. I could go into the year ID column and I'll just apply a quick sort. I can sort in descending order. And when I apply that operation, a little menu on the left-hand side will pop up. It'll give me some UI boxes to help me uh, make this uh, sorting feature work correctly. You'll also notice there's an option here to add any missing values. So if that column has missing data points, we can put those to the top of the list. This is a, a sorting operation that we can do and we could filter them out or we can then see them at least. So this will actually help us uh, to do that. I'll click on the apply button down here up at the bottom. And you'll also notice down here when I did that filter operation, the cleaning steps shows that I'm sorting the values and the code that is representing that is showing here. So this is the actual code you would write in Python to reflect that change. Now this is where I love this because this is going it's documenting sort by column, it's giving me some text, it's actually writing the code for me, and now I can actually learn how to write the code by using these standard operations. So I'll hit apply here, and what will happen now is it will now render the data, it'll add the operation and show me the operation inside the window and you'll see right away we don't have any blank values, but you do see the index is now in a random order because we have sorted by the year IDs that are shown here. All right, enough of the overview of what's happening in Data Wrangler. I'm going to transition over here to Tommy, and Tommy's going to demo more steps or add more transformations into the data. And Mike, this is why I love this so much. Uh, just being able to look at what Data Wrangler can do. Uh, one of the things, looking at the number of hits that's occurred, I can tell you without even writing any code, the most hits in a major league season, simply by going over a column and being able to see the maximum hits here. Love which it. Which is absolutely amazing. It's cool stuff. And also, for those who are wondering, there's only 30 teams in major league baseball. Why does it say 42? Well, that's why we're doing Data Wrangler, to clean it up. But let's do some operations. That, let's actually provide some analytics around batting average, which is not available here. And it's going to be a simple calculation. So what we're going to start with is I'm going to actually just filter years that I need. And I'm not going to look at 1995 and forward. I'm actually going to choose here the year ID. And I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to go over the ellipses. And I'm going to choose filter. And on my left-hand side, I now get my target column and I can choose the condition. I'm going to say it's greater than. And let's go ahead and say greater than 2020. So now we're going to choose the years 2021 and 2022. 
Once I click apply, you'll notice that we get the red values that's showing what's going to be excluded. Anything that's green shows what's going to be included. So we have our now are the right years that we want to look at. But again, I want to group everything. We're looking at two columns and we want to sum them up. I want to just not show individual seasons. I want to show everything included. So what I'm actually going to do is there's another option on the left-hand side that says group and aggregate. And this is exactly what we're going to choose. So I'm going to go to group and aggregate, and I'm going to choose the column we're going to group by. In this case, I'm going to choose the player ID. So this is going to be the players and their total hits, total at-bats for the two seasons. Now we choose the aggregations. So I'm going to choose my at-bats, and we're going to choose sum here uh, since it's a number. And you can see I'll automatically showing me a preview. Green, what's going to be included. Red, what's going to be excluded. Let's add another aggregation because we're also going to choose hits which is the H and we're going to do the sum again. And again, it's showing me that preview. Hey, if you click apply, this is what you're going to have the result look like. So let's go ahead and click apply here. It's going to do a quick load and now we're going to be left with the three columns. So I have my at bats sum, which is simply the sum of the, the group by that we did in the H sum, which is the hits uh, that are summed up the two rows. Again, Mike, now we need to create another column. And what we want to do is we want to simply divide H sum, the hits, divided by the at-bats. And we want to see okay, who has the best batting average over the last two years. Simple uh, analysis that you may want to do depending on your data set. So what we're actually going to do is we're actually going to go to this new, we're going to choose our columns, holding control, at-bats and sums. And I'm going to go down to this new column by example here. And this is what I'm going to choose. Now, this is where it gets slightly different from dealing with Power Query because, again, we're writing in Python here. What we're actually going to do is on the very bottom, we're actually going to write in our Python or basically what's going to sell in a notebook. Yeah. And what we, yes. Tommy, before you add that one, do, do the edit of the column name in the, in the window first. In the, sure. the operations window on the left hand side. Yeah, edit yep. there. Yep. So okay. we want to, we'll choose our uh, batting or our column name that we're going to have and we'll call it bat, our batting average. Perfect. And so while Tommy's writing the name there, so one thing you'll notice here is if you use the, the window, um, the window allows you to have those changes applied there. And as soon as you edit the text, so there's, a, there's an interesting thing here. As soon as you modify the code beyond the scope of what is standard, and this is standard operations, you'll see that that window in the operations will actually disappear. So Tommy, go ahead and keep modifying because we haven't applied the math yet. We've basically made the column. We've mm -hmm. selected the two rows we're interested in, but we haven't applied the math. So we'll then apply this into our Lambda function that Tommy will write next. So let's go ahead and add here. We're going to choose, again, we're going to write in our pandas or Python, and we're going to choose the row. So we're going to choose row, h underscore sum, and we're simply going to divide that against our at batting sum. So this is now what we're doing now is is the the lambda function is now is applying. Yeah, yeah, you're right, Donald. And it's now Python time. So uh, this lambda function is now applying the lambda function at our row level detail, and then it's just taking the data elements inside those two different columns and dividing them out the way we want which is now producing what we want to see on the end here is now our batting average as a decimal. It's important to note at this point in time, nothing's been applied yet. It's showing simply that preview. So what we want to make sure to actually add this column to Data Wrangler, we want to make sure we hit apply. And just like that, we've got our new data column added. All right, Tommy, this looks great. How do we get this? So we've done some engineering of data. Again, you can engineer data a number of different ways. Uh, we do want to call out there are a number of operations in here on the left hand side in the operations pane you have things like finding and replacing you can change the format of a column you can change the schema or drop columns of a table you can add numeric functions so you're going to round up round down these are all standard formulas that you would use over and over again so um, what we're just using here is a small subset of all the out of the box formulas you can use with data wrangler and i think They've done a really good job. A lot of the main operations you will need will be able to be done or be able to start with these operations you have here already. So at this point, Mike, again, we're looking at the preview, but 
what I really want to do at this point is I actually want to add this to my notebook so sure. I can either call this again, push this to another table. So yeah. really at this point, we're not done yet until we click on add code to notebook. And simply what we're going to do is we're going to click on the add code to notebook on the top. And we'll go ahead and click apply. And you can actually see all the code that we created. Everything we did in the UI is now created in our new code on the bottom here. And hello, Mike. But Come in there as well. See, yeah, we can see Mike's in here as well. We have all the code that we did, again, filtering the year, looking at uh, adding only those two columns with our group by and adding our new column. And look how nice it commented our text out. Okay, Tommy, run the command. Let's see what we get. So um, hopefully we'll get a whole bunch of stuff out of here that'll work. Oh, it's got a divide by er zero arrow. So we have a we have a divide by zero arrow here on the, our IDs here. So I'm going to try something here. I'm going to modify our code slightly. Let's go. We go to the year 2022 in our pandas data frame, and we'll try running it again, and we'll see if the it was just a year issue on year 2021. This is probably, and this is part part of what we need to do with Data Wrangler because we're also dealing with pictures. Uh, we're dealing with a lot of uh, some bad information here. Yeah, it looks like we have to go back and clean some more of our stuff. So, all if we had our data cleaned, which we uh, apparently don't have a lot of clean data here, we would have to filter out some additional information. And our data frame, when we're doing the division symbol here of row sum, uh, our AB, our at bats, and our hits division, um, we are not able to. Uh, show that information there because of the divide by zero option on the the bottom half of there. So we'd have to replace that with uh, or skipping those values as well. Okay. This is also a kind of a reason here too. In the data wrangler, the reason we didn't get this error was because data wrangler was using a sample of the data frame. We're probably using the entire data frame now. Oh, looks like I got it to run, Tommy. We just removed the column there because again, we're still in Python. So there we go. So you just delete the column out. So this is the all the math of the table, excluding our brand new column. So what we would need to do now is go back into our data frame or even in our, our Python code here and edit our code a little bit. And then we can additionally clean our data a bit more, uh, which will then refine our function. And then we can use that in our, in our uh, notebook here as well. All right. With that, that's kind of a, a quick overview of how you get into Data Wrangler, what kind of operations you can do, and then how you move that code back into your notebooks. With that, thank you very much. We appreciate your time today, and we'll see you on the next time.